lectures are live streamed on our social media platforms. Thousands of students, faculty members, and heads of institutions watch these programs. Today, we have Professor Satyan Subbaya from IIT Madras, which is my alma mater. In today's topic, Professor Subbaya is going to talk on inclusive internship and placements. Friends, you know that in national education policy, a greater emphasis is put on experiential learning through internship. And it's also important that we have good placement activities in our higher educational institutions to make sure that as many of our students are placed even before they pass out of the institution. Many university systems still do not have a good internship and placement uh, cell in place. I'm sure today with the ideas that Professor Subaya is going to discuss with us based on his own experience of handling the placement and internship activities at IIT Madras, um, I'm sure that uh, you will benefit from the ideas that we are going to um, hear from Professor Subaya. I very warmly welcome Professor Subaya uh, to this platform to deliver his lecture. Professor Subaya. Uh, thank you uh, very much, uh, Dr. Jagdish Kumar. Uh, I hope you, you all can hear my audio okay? Yes. Yeah, okay. Good morning uh, to one and all. Um, I thank UGC and I thank uh, Dr. Jagdish Kumar and Gopal Kumar as well for inviting me uh, and uh, giving this chance to share our uh, lessons that uh, learned and uh, what we do at placement and internship office here. So shall I, can I go and share my screen? I'll quickly go and share my screen. Um, I'm assuming it will allow me. Okay, can you all see my screen? Yes, we can see. Okay, maybe, no, uh, hold on. Let me just share my entire screen. Uh, so that it'll look the, yeah. Yeah, I'm in full screen mode. I hope you can see the full screen mode as well, yeah. Uh, yes, yeah, so Dr. Jagdish Kumar briefly introduced. Uh, um, I'm currently the placement advisor at uh, IIT Madras. Um, the placement advisor position is a, you know, uh, it's a rotating position. You know, faculty uh, take uh, turns to uh, be in charge of this uh, placement advisor. And typically it is about a couple of years or so. Uh, and I recently took over, to be honest. I was, in, I was in charge of internships last year and I've taken over for placement. And previously my colleague, Dr. Shankar Ram, um, was in charge. And so whatever I'm going to show you is all actually lessons learned uh, by interacting with Shankar Ram and what we do, uh, or what we plan to do in the next few years as well. Um, uh, so that's what I'm going to talk about. Um, although the title says inclusive uh, placement and internship, I'll give you a more broader view of uh, placement and internship in general at IIT Madras and how we ended up uh, uh, you know, uh, helping or including a lot of the other students as well. And this happened recently as well last year. Uh, so we'll talk a little bit about their inclu inclusiveness towards the end of this talk. Uh, so I'll predominantly talk a lot about how what placement uh, what happens at placement and internship at uh, at IIT Madras. Yeah. Okay, so that's basically what I will start with. So this is roughly my agenda. Um, uh, I think we all know and understand the internships and placements and its value in higher education. So I'll um, briefly talk about this uh, 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 internship and placements uh, and its role in higher education. The way, at least the way that I see it and the way we see it in our uh, 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 office at IIT Madras. And we'll talk a little bit about uh, our structure, uh, how, uh, uh, you know, how our replacement and internship office uh, team is structured. Uh, in fact, uh, here I will emphasize, emphasize a lot about how uh, most of our activities are uh, uh, actually driven by students. Uh, so we empower students. We have student teams that are empowered. Uh, uh, we have a very democratic process, actually. Uh, we have several secretaries who are elected by the students. So those secretaries appoint coordinators, uh, and then coordinators have sub-coordinators, and so on and so forth. So we have a nice uh, umbrella structure, uh, and it's actually the student team who really take the effort. They they put a lot of enthusiasm uh, in, into the into this whole process, 
in fact without them it, our, our placement internship office would probably not function uh, we do have some uh, permanent staff and uh, pay a salary permanent staff here who have a, a contract staff as well and they they support the students but it is the students who take the initiative who drive uh, and as i will explain later as well uh, followed by that i'll uh, briefly explain to you what, what do i mean by internship process that happens at uh, it madras and then the placement process uh, that I, that, uh, that happens at it madras and uh, there's a, there's a strong connect that's being developed now between internships and placements uh, so i'll talk about that uh, I mean, gone are those days when internships were separate and then placements were separate. A lot of companies are actually linking both together. Uh, so they take students uh, in internship, interns, they, they study them and then they get a chance for two, three months to observe them. And if they have a position coming up and they feel this candidate is very good, they give an offer to uh, that student right away. So this is called pre-placement offers. So those are increasing by the year actually. So there's a strong link now between internship and placement. So I'll briefly talk about that as well. And towards the end, I'll talk about is inclusion, the way we see inclusiveness uh, among our student communities, not just inclusiveness. In a, there are many different aspects of inclusion I'll talk about. Uh, and then we did a, a special drive for inclusive placements last year. Um, so I'll talk uh, briefly about that and then summarize what uh, uh, what I think are the main points that are probably takeaway points that uh, you, you may try out in your institute as well. So that's roughly the, the agenda uh, for the talk. Okay, so um, um, so um, uh, well, well uh, whether it's higher, higher educational institutions, uh, especially um, a place like IIT Madras, um, I mean, internships and placements have a very uh, very important place um, in our structure of an institute. It's not just about uh, degree programs, courses, faculty uh, who come and teach and exams and so forth. Those are important, obviously. But uh, the uh, internship and placements are uh, crucially important. So we we, um, uh, we give a lot of attention to that, uh, both faculty and uh, staff and uh, all, uh, all the deans and directors also all pay, pay um, uh, special attention to the internship and placement process. And as you know, uh, any any education institute, uh, uh, the, the most important output that we have is uh, is the um, uh, human resources, the graduating students who pick up skills and uh, and, uh, and they uh, come out of the institute with certain skill sets which are hopefully useful in their life going forward. And uh, the graduating students uh, um, uh, are now more and more inclusive of uh, all, all types of degrees. Um, uh, predominantly, a long time back, just only bachelor's degree was a lot of focus on BTEC. Uh, then came masters with uh, M Tech, and then masters became MS, which is um, uh, you know masters by research. So we had masters by coursework, which was M Tech, and then masters by we have MS program here as well. Uh, and then somewhere along the, along the lines, dual degrees came as well. So somebody could spend a little bit less time uh, compared to a bachelor's plus masters and get a dual degree as well. And then of course you know the, the doctoral degree programs are, uh, are there everywhere now, including at uh, in, uh, at Madras, and we have many graduates that come out of the system. With a PhD degree as well, and if you look at, if you think about all this, uh, you know, all the aspects uh, that the students undergo here. Of course, coursework is predominantly what they undergo. Uh, they as soon as they, at least as soon as they join the program. So we have a faculty with certain expertise. They sit in classes. They go through some courses. They may do even projects within courses. They may do assignments, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, or if you're if you're in a uh, if you do a, a BTEC project, which is optional now, but it's, uh, you know, if you do a BTEC project or you do a master's uh, project is mandatory, you have to do a MTEC project. So you learn in, in predominantly in courses and projects is what we usually think about. But you also learn in other, other places, uh, especially they learn uh, a lot in extracurricular activities uh, that happens at the campus, uh, which develop a lot of soft skills for students, which are useful in internships and placements as well. Uh, so it's it's their peer learning you can think about. They form student clubs, they form competitions, and then you know they they do they organize stuff in the campus. So these are all extracurricular activities through which they learn a lot of things as well. And to add to all of this is internships. So internships is uh, is another way where they learn a lot about how what corporate life is, what companies are, how companies work, uh, how people in companies work as teams, uh, and so on and so forth. So internship is again a, a critical part of how uh, uh, the students pick up a lot of skills. So if you look at our, our structure, um, uh, the bachelor's degree and master's degree and the dual degree have compulsory internships. They, are, um, they used to be credited internships. Um, uh, a while back, we had credits. So if you did, a, if you did an internship uh, at a company and then uh, you, know, you can earn uh, you know, whatever is nine credits, 12 credits, et cetera. But recently, many departments have gone away from that and they've made it to pass-fail um, degree, uh, pass-fail category of courses. 
but it's a compulsory course. It's a mandatory. You have to pass. You have to uh, submit a report. You have to submit a certificate saying that you've completed an internship. Uh, and so that is part of the uh, still there's still a requirement today, and many uh, uh, students, uh, in fact, all students have to do it. Uh, well, um, this internship is not compulsory in the case of an MTech or a um, um, or a PhD or a master's degree, but uh, of late uh, now more and more MTech students also realizing the value of internships and they're coming forward to take up internships with due permissions from various because uh, you have to get a permission from your department from your if you have a project guide you have to get permission and there's HCTA that's involved so that as the scholarship has to be stopped etc in case the student gets a paid internship and so on and so forth but there are some processes that we are putting in place now to enable uh, mtech students also to take up internships not just project but internships that happens uh, between the semesters so so uh, so with all this uh, different uh, uh, training that the students undergo the question uh, comes is of course you know what's the next step for the student after uh, graduating from iit madras yeah so that's uh, uh, although it seems like an exit start exit thing you know we should not worry too much about it but that is obviously important uh, because I mean, one of the ways we see graduating students they're not graduating students but they are future alumni of the institute and uh, tomorrow we want to have a strong alumni connect with the institute as well um, uh, 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 you know so that's the reason why we also pay more attention to graduating students in terms of how uh, what is their as they leave the, the university uh, or the institute uh, in, in our in our case IIT Madras so in, you know what is our relationship with them and so the more we help them during the exit stages also it is uh, it's going to be critical of how, of how the alumni feel about connecting back to the institute as well so uh, the point of the slide is internship and placements have a very uh, critical role uh, for us at uh, IIT Madras and so we see it in many ways um, uh, you know we want our students to be useful to the society in some ways and more or less we, all, we also want the students to be useful to us in many ways in, in terms of being, being a selfish a little bit selfish here to say that you know as an alumni we want them to be better connected back to us and the last stage of you know sort of helping them out is through a placement and 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 an internship being an interim step where they is also part of the training and curriculum is how we think about it yeah so that's what that's the way that's the way we view uh, internship and placements at item address today not only just me but our team and students also are sort of understanding how this works in terms of uh, connect to the institute so, uh, so if you, if you, um, so from a from a graduating student perspective, you can think of uh, 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 something like this. Some, some options that these students may have here, as, as I've shown on the screen. Yeah. So, if you are a, if you're an IIT Madras graduating student, you have uh, several options here. You know, the, uh, what you see in the lower left in terms of professional jobs is a lot. A lot of students take up and do. Um, so, at the end of the uh, their their, uh, their degree program, they say, okay, I want to find a job in a company. You know, it can be a salaried position. I, you know, I, I'm looking for this MNCs. I'm looking for a small company. I'm looking for a medium company, etc. And to go towards that, I need to have, uh, you know, besides what I'm going through my coursework, etc. I need to have an internship experience with with an industry, and I want to have soft skills training as well. So this is something that we try and, and impart uh, to a graduating student, somebody who wants to take up a professional job uh, as a career. Uh, so uh, we have an internship office that helps them connect to industries. They do an internship and they take it up. And we also have a career uh, uh, sort of a, a training cell where there are a few programs that the students themselves have identified. And we try to uh, appoint a specialist who will come and teach them about how to communicate, how to present, what is body language, how do you talk. Uh, you know, if, you, if you're in a debate, how do you effectively try to convince somebody to, of your idea, etc. So those are those kind of soft skills that we're talking about. Some of the soft skills the students pick up, as I said, through extracurricular activities in the institute. But we also have training programs uh, for them uh, to take it up. Uh, uh, I mean, as you know, uh, these are some of the things that companies look for in interviews. You know, if it can be a group discussion. They, they watch you, how you talk, how you are able to put across a point. Can you think clearly on your feet? And uh, when you have less time, can you you know really project your ideas clearly across uh, the table uh, to somebody, for example? So these kind of trainings that we try and give uh, to the students as well. Now the other option that a student may have is, oh, you know, I, I want to do uh, my own company. So that's an entrepreneurship thing that that is also uh, possible today, and in fact, it's more and more uh, popular not only at IIT Madras but across the institutes in India as well. So in this case, we encourage students to do internships with startups themselves. So you, uh, so we have startup companies. Uh, we have a research park at the you know behind our campus. So we ask companies to come from there and uh, and recruit students uh, from our uh, uh, so recruit interns from our student body. And uh, 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 students also spend some time with our faculty research groups, again, soft skills training. So to combine, uh, combining all of this, uh, uh, students may be more interested in entrepreneurship. 
so we have an entrepreneurship e cell it's called e cell that's also part of this whole group umbrella so our so the, the placement internship office works along with e cell as well uh, so they have a special drive for interns and they have a special drive for placements also that they do uh, so so this is another option that a student may have uh, he or she may want to start a company so what does it mean to start a company what is a startup like what are the pain points of startups so the earlier the student gets to know about this, they can decide if that's what they want to do, or or they may have they may be working with the faculty research group and then say, hey, I have this idea, you know, I think this is viable, and then so we we have some uh, some mechanisms to help them pre because it's called pre incubators, so that will help us go, uh, you know, help the students check their technological viability, entrepreneurship viability, and then say, hey, okay, here's this is this startup possible or not, for example. So that is one way. Yes, that's what you see on the bottom right of the screen. And then uh, the top uh, left is higher studies. So a lot of students, uh, uh, I mean, I, I was like that as well. I studied IIT at but as BTEC, and then I left overseas for higher education. Uh, so higher education is something that is an option as well for a student. And we, uh, we also do some few things to help them get internships at research organizations. And research organizations can be anywhere in India. It can be abroad. There are many foreign universities that offer internship uh, schemes as well. Or if somebody wants to go to IISC or you know different uh, other uh, CSIR labs, or any other uh, government labs that are there, and they want to do internships there. So there are some things that our, our student teams helps them to connect and then see if there are any schemes that you know they can actually do internships in those research organizations, and then use that as a way to as a springboard to go to uh, apply to higher education at other institutions as well. So that's another career path that we uh, you know we have uh, provision, we have a, a path to allow them to take as well. And then finally, you have a, an option to do research careers. Again, uh, you know, uh, somebody say, let's say you're, you're you're an MS or a PhD PhD scholar, and uh, you you like the research environment, you like the research way of thinking and doing stuff, and you decide to go to a, a, a labs or or it can be industry research careers at the industry also. And then again, you know, research organizations within whether it's a company based, whether it's a government organization based. So that's another career that you can take. So the point of the slide is, you know, uh, at the placement internship office, we try to enable uh, the student to uh, to explore all these paths and see which one sort of fits them. Some of them will 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 have a very predefined ideas what I want to do. Some of them may not know at all what they want to do, and uh, uh, we will have some uh, the discussions with them, and they may come in one on one and talk to me, or they they will approach the student team that we have. And then figure out, okay, given these options, which one should I go for? Some of them will, will, will try to do everything. They'll try to play safe and see which one I should pick as well. So all these very common things that will happen. But we try to get the students to make uh, make, up, make up their mind and focus on a certain aspects as well. So to that uh, to that extent, in the future, we're going to have some more uh, counselors in, in the office where the, they can, uh, the students can uh, talk. They can give a, have an appointment. They can sit and talk and say, hey, this is what I would like to do. What, what sort of things that, that is possible in the future, et cetera. So that's something that we are planning. It's not we don't have counselors today at the internship and placement office, but that's something that is being uh, worked out to see how we can enable this. So this is uh, sort of uh, roughly how we think that uh, we well, these are the different various options that we have giving to students today. Um, uh, some of them are very structured nicely, but some of them are still in, uh, coming up in place and they go organically going. So hopefully we can uh, develop this nicely as well. Okay, so in terms of uh, how our office and uh, team is structured, um, uh, so uh, um, uh, we have an office. Uh, we have a, 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 a IDM address contributes two permanent staff. They, they pay their salaries and they are uh, they are there as well. Sometimes they are they are also rotated. So we have a, a team that is uh, sort of constant for a few years, and then we may have new staff coming in uh, because our register will rotate staff as well. So in that sense, we have two IDM permanent staff uh, who are paid salary from the institute. And then we have a space given to the, by the institute. You know, we have conference rooms. We have to conduct interviews, and then, uh, you know, we have a, a meeting room for companies to come and talk. And we have the staff office uh, space as well. So all this is provided by the institute. Uh, besides that, we, we, we uh, you know, later on I'll talk about how we sometimes we conduct interviews in hostels uh, and so on and so forth. So those are all, uh, um, uh, uh, you know, resources that the institute provides to us. Uh, besides that, we also have five contractual staff uh, who are not paid by the institute, uh, and I'll explain to you later how they are how their salary is covered. And we also have we have, we have a, 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 a we have hired an IT expert as well. So who uh, he uh, in this case he he helps develop and maintain portals as of now. Um, so so that is uh, so besides we have four staff who will help us with all the admin work, tracking, uh, putting data on Excel, you know, plotting data, report for me for me to report back to the institute on a monthly basis what's happening at institute etc all those people have these staff also will work both this uh, uh, permanent staff and the contract staff they work with the student team uh, and of course it staff, it expert also works with the student team and they 
together they develop uh, the i mean they, they manage the activities of the placement internship office and uh, uh, as i said uh, before as well at the beginning of this talk it's a student team that's really really strong in our uh, institute it's a very democratic uh, team uh, we have a uh, i'll show you structure later we have a elected uh, secretary for academic affairs and uh, he or she will have his, her, her own team of uh, both for internships there'll be a team placements together placement there'll be a team and this from this year onwards they're actually sort of going to work together uh, earlier we had separate teams for internships and placements i'm talking about student teams here yeah and we have hundreds of students working you know throughout the year uh, helping uh, their seniors get various positions and then you know when they when they go up their juniors will help them and so on and so forth so it's sort of like a rotating thing and it's a nice structure that is in place so we have several uh, heads as a ug placement head as a ug internship head as a pg placement head pg internship head and then we have several coordinators in fact we have department wise coordinators who will track department wise statistics so how many students have got placed in this department which department is lagging behind how do we you know get contact more companies in those departments and then so we have we uh, we track uh, monthly and see where we are at with the department uh, statistics and so on and so forth of course we also have degree wise uh, coordinators as well so whole track based on degree so if there any particular degree program that's lagging behind in placements and interns so our, uh, you know the students will sort of uh, accelerate the activities in that uh, in that area and see how we can go forward and besides this, we have a whole bunch of volunteers and sometimes they're asked as, uh, as young as the first year students who get volunteered so they you know we, are, we give them t-shirts and you know, some kind of incentives like to come and help us out uh, in various activities so this is roughly the the how the team works at at least at iit madras this is what we do so in terms of the student team structure itself you can see it's like it's like this so we have this placement internship cell governing council so here you have the secretary of the the elected secretary uh, in terms of governing uh, myself and uh, uh, our internship so i'm just I'm, I'm the placement coordinator we also have an internship coordinator is also a faculty uh, uh, and then we have a dean of students who's all broadly in the governing council and uh, uh, and you have all this uh, you know three layers that you see here so at the bottom you have deputy coordinators and then you have coordinators which is the light green level that you see there then you have this whole, whole bunch of cores uh, department team cores we have uh, industrial and public relations cores and then uh, and then we have separate cores for the new degrees this is the, inter the interdisciplinary degrees are fairly new so we felt there's a need to focus more on that so you have degree cores in those uh, interdisciplinary programs as well so and, and all these ex all these layers that you see the blue layers the green layers and the yellow layer at the bottom they're all students they're all student driven the students have taken up this initiative they in fact the whole structure is also evolved by them uh, and as faculty, I, uh, my job is only to oversee and make sure that things are going smoothly in terms of how the structure works. Yeah. So, so this uh, again, you know, the main takeaway from this uh, from this talk, if anything, is uh, it's it's a student-driven initiative. Yeah. Students of course, students understand the value of placements and internships, and they are doing a service to their uh, you know to their seniors or current batch. In, in fact, can be even the current batch as well. Yeah. So they are sort of helping themselves, they're helping their peers, they're helping their seniors uh, to get placed, to get internships and so forth. So we build a you know sort of a database of various companies and all this is developed and maintained by the student team with the help of our uh, office staff as well. So this is very important, you know, the, uh, this without the structure in place, our, uh, uh, our internship and placement office will not work very efficiently at all. Yeah, if only if we had the staff who are taking care of this and we are telling students what to do, it, this structure would never work. Yeah. So it's a very democratic process. It is the students who decide uh, a lot of policies and rules. I'll talk about some of the policies and rules a little bit later. And they come up with it. And we just want to, uh, you know, my, one of my main jobs is to make sure that the policies are fair. It is, you know, is applying to all the student categories and, and, and so on and so forth. So that's what we, uh, my, my job is to simply make sure that I work with the students and make sure things are going in a smooth manner. So the student team structure is an extremely important component uh, of this uh, office team. So if you look at the, you know, we try to come up with some vision, mission, mission, vision, et cetera. So first I'll talk a little bit about internships. So, um, um, so the internship office, uh, so, so in our broad structure, we have this internship and placements, and I'll talk more, more about these two. We also have other things like I mentioned earlier, e-cell, which is the entrepreneurship, entrepreneur, entrepreneurship cell, which I'll not talk too much about. Then you have another office that focuses mainly on training. So that's also something that I'll talk about. But these four entities work together uh, in, in terms of helping the students uh, with the internship and placement process. Okay, so so if you look at this um, uh, internship office itself, so we want to uh, you know get the students obviously a real life experience in the professional world of startups. It can be startups, it can be MSMEs, it can be large MNCs that are you know across the world, or it can be research organizations in India as well. Yeah, so uh, so we strongly believe that the you know the internship is 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 part and parcel of the training that they get. It's not, of course it's not a training that we provide them at the institute, but we help them link with companies and the companies provide the, the training. 
Okay, so by doing this, they are uh, you know they are uh, they are professionally a little bit more ready uh, than just simply sitting in a classroom and learning uh, from faculty like me. And so we transform them from a classroom student to a ready to go professional to this to this internship. Yeah, so objectives are to gain. I mean, these are all standard stuff that the internship offers. So I don't have to uh, I mean, belabor this too much. But uh, you know, help a student gain real world experience, identify lacuna in the soft skills, especially soft skills. Soft skills is something that they they will they only pick up here. You know, they prepare. You know, at least in our case, they they work. You know, they prepare rigorously for GE, etc. They are always in the sort of the, the uh, you know co uh, you know so problem solving on the paper kind of mode. Now they so they may lack the soft skills. So really pick up some of the soft skills to internships or other trainings that happens in the, in the campus. And of course, you know, the job is to get a good match between the industry and the graduate for long-term engagement. And this is important, you know, as I said, there is a link between internships and placements that's coming up. So uh, uh, so, the, so the students, we, we encourage students to think not just as, a, oh, this is an internship for two months and I'm done with it. No, it's something that you may end up getting up a job offer as well. And then it can be a long-term engagement with the companies. So we call this PPO, I'll explain PPO later. It's called pre-placement offers. So before the, the student even comes into the placement um, uh, sort of a cell or a structure, it is they already have a job in place and they, they will not even sometimes even not even participate in the placement process. OK, so so the way it works is that, they, uh, you know, we, we form the student team, as I said earlier, at the end of every academic year, the next year student team gets formed. Yeah. And uh, 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 so, for example, uh, uh, you know, by the time in April, May itself, in April, May, we are, we are talking about the next student team because elections would have happened, secretaries would have come in place, he or she would have picked up their next student team. So by April, May, the next student team, which is from, you know, May to, uh, you know, April of next year, so that student team gets formed. And then uh, 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 earlier we had separate teams for placement and internships. So now they're combined uh, because we, we really need more help with internships this time. So we are combining the placement internships. So they're both uh, the teams will work on both aspects of placement internships as well. And then the rules and policies are framed for the next coming year. Yeah. And these are policies uh, that tell, you know, who can uh, sit for internships or, you know, can you get more than one offer? What will you do? Uh, so this is, I mean, these are mainly rules and policies in place to be a very fair structure for everybody. Yeah. So there's not like somebody who, you know, will uh, sort of play the game and get uh, more uh, advantage out of the system than others. So these rules and policies uh, are, are in place. Uh, again, you know, structured uh, by the students themselves. Students themselves have structured this. And we, uh, faculty and a few others, few of us will just actually re uh, review this and make some changes if you think that there are certain things that seems to bias others and so on and so forth. So these uh, rules and policies are in place. Uh, so we review them. We review last year's policies. We look and say, uh, you know, if something didn't work, what didn't work, we modified. In fact, we just went through those exercises in the last couple of months. So the rules and policies for both internship and placements are ready, for example, for this year, and they're already going on right now. And more importantly, these rules are clearly conveyed to students. It's a very transparent process. We tell the students, we, we send all these rules to students, they put up on our portal. If you go to our uh, you know internship or placement portal, they're already there. They open to public, anybody can read them. Companies can read them. The recruiters also know what they are uh, you know, up against in terms of rules and policies and what the students will be following them. So a very transparent process. You know, Everybody can actually see what's going on. So in the time of sometime the time of June, we start uh, inviting companies. So uh, we send them these rules and policies. We have a small internship brochure that we have, the students have prepared and we send it to them and then we invite them to come for the internship process. And what does it mean to come for the internship process? The, the recruiters and uh, the companies have to go to a portal. So there's an online portal that they have to go and they'll have to register themselves, you know, or our or, or, or office staff, your office staff, as I said, about two permanent staff and five contracts. So they'll actually help the companies uh, do a registration there. They have to tell them who they are, what kind of profiles they want to hire, what is the background of students they want. So all that information is, is captured in the online portal. And uh, the, uh, not only companies register, students also register. So students also uh, are invited to register. So they will come in, they will give uh, their department, their interest, et cetera, resume is uploaded. Uh, uh, by the way, the, re the resumes are also checked. Yeah. So one of the things that companies ask us is help us with to make sure that we, you know we have a genuine resume claims that are made in the resume. So we have a student team that will actually look at the resume and make uh, check. You know they'll have a check if there's any something's not right. They'll come back and ask the student to clarify, etc. If clarification is not possible, they'll ask the student to take off the point from the CV and so forth. So there's a strong check that is in place. So students are also very careful in what they put as claims in their CV because obviously a CV is important, right? Because the companies are going to look at it and so forth. So we have a student team and volunteers will actually help do a CV verification process. Um, and uh, this, I know this happens in many other institutes also. Uh, and, uh, um, and so, so they have to give very strong documentation for every point that they claim in their CV. Yeah. Okay. And so once they've done that, the students now know who's which company is hiring what, so they can apply against those internship positions. Yeah. 
and uh, 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 many companies. So that's a typo. Sorry, it should be many companies start shortlisting the last but one bullet point. So many companies start shortlisting. So they'll they'll know which companies, which uh, to their company, which positions, which students have applied. They can start looking at their CVs, etc. They may do a shortlisting, etc. But what what finally happens in early August is, in fact, this August we already completed two rounds. Uh, so it's called day one of the process. So there are some companies that are. Uh, selected as uh, you know much sought after companies by the students it can be based on their you know a well-known brand or they are working in some hot areas like data analytics or, be, or may just be because they're offering a high internship salary for example so so the student community come them they, they will discuss and come up with a list of companies that they will call for day one yeah uh, in this case we actually have actually had two days uh, two day ones because uh, there were so many companies that, that were uh, important for the students so we made a day 1.1 1 .1 and day 1.2 and this happens over a couple of saturdays and what actually happens here is that uh, um, uh, they actually the interviews are actually held on this on those days. Yeah, um, uh, pre-pandemic we were mostly offline, so students companies used to come here and you know do the uh, sort of the interview. And during the pandemic we were entirely online, and now we are uh, hopefully uh, we can, I can say post-pandemic uh, very boldly now. But after the pandemic is over, we have sort of a mix of offline and online. And um, um, uh, many companies actually come in day one process. So we actually, this time we actually did an interview process in the hostel rooms. So we block a set of hostel rooms block. We have about, I think two, but you know, 150 or 150 plus rooms were blocked. And uh, certain rooms are year marked for companies, the time slots are given to them. And during those time slots, all the students are actually coming to the hostel rooms. Um, the, uh, the students come here both for online and offline interviews. And typically, this is carried out on Saturdays. Yeah, so we just completed uh, two rounds, and we had a very successful uh, day one uh, last month. And we had, you know, we actually beat our previous year's record of uh, internship offers that were made just in day one. Now, just because it's day one doesn't mean internship process stops here. Internship process is continuous all the way until April. So our student teams are continuously contacting companies, and we have small, small day two, day three, day four, and day n, and so forth, where we invite companies. Uh, so while was maybe next Saturday we'll have 10 companies that will come and do interviews and the following couple of Saturdays later, we'll have a few companies that will come in and so on and so forth. So depending on the student team's availability, they are, uh, you know, they, they, of course, student, this is a student team, right? So they have their own quizzes and exams and courses going on as well. So they figure out, okay, this Saturday we will allocate time and then we'll do this. So they do that. Uh, so throughout the, so this happens throughout the year. The day one is a major mela that happens uh, where, you know, a lot of companies come in and do it. And then subsequently it's more of a, you know, small, small set of companies that come throughout the year until April or so. So we try to get placed uh, roughly around 60 to 70 percent of students who apply through our office. Yeah, the other students who go offline on their own and get internships, and that's up to them. But whoever comes here, we try to help them with the, the internship process. Okay. So this is roughly. I'm just giving you some screenshots of portals. You can also look up on the website. This is a, you know, the uh, uh, where the student will come and log in. We have a similar. A portal for the re recruiter, the company as well, so they'll have to come and log in. The policy documents uh, that's been, that's given over here is mentioned here as well, so you can open the policy document and see what are the different uh, policies are in place. Uh, the other thing that you notice here is students have to pay a fee for this. So, so this is this is important. Not not many institutes may have this. Um, uh, this uh, so as I said, we only have two uh, two staff who are employed by the institute, right? So the remaining five contract staff we have to pay them. Yeah. And different office activities also we have. So all this is uh, actually paid through the student in, student internship fees that they pay. Yeah. So so uh, so you know the last several years we have had this. Students have not had any complaints. They understand the process that's happening behind it. The kind of support structure they get to get internships and placements. So they're happy to pay this. So we actually run our show using this kind of money uh, funds that come in. Yeah. We are trying to move into more of an alumni sponsoring model as well. So that's coming up later. Uh, uh, so uh, until then, we'll have to sort of support ourselves through this uh, pay structure. Yeah. So this is something not many institutes do. I know there are a few institutes who do it. Uh, I think as ID Bombay or maybe even Delhi does it. Uh, so they ask students to pay, and then using that money, and students also have more more responsible now, right? So they are paying a fees. They expect they have a lot of expectations from us as well, and that's okay. And they understand that okay, this is serious stuff. You know, I paid money. I better make use of this portal properly, make use of structure properly, and see if I can get an internship through it. Okay, so and and uh, uh, and uh, and you know, so the students may come back and say there are some students who say, "Oh, I cannot afford to pay them." That's fine. We figure out a way to support them as well. But it, until now, people have not had much of a difficulty in terms of paying for this, right? And this is the student guidelines and policies. I'll not go into all details here, but you can find this on the website. It talks about you know where is what, what interviews, what happens, timelines, what, they, what you know, uh, how uh -huh. does the student get interviewed? Zoom and so on, so. mute audio, stop video. 
yeah so you can see the you know anything from dress codes everything we come we give all kinds of advice and guidelines for policies in place as well so these are all again you know as i said this is not something that faculty came up with this is students have come up with themselves and faculty have sort of intervened and edited and corrected some of these documents so it's it's sort of very organically grown very democratic so students themselves are owning this right so it's a it's a nice way in that sense Okay, so I know I'm running short of time here, so maybe I should speed up a little bit. So one thing I want to mention about internships is uh, PPOs. This, uh, so in the past, what has happened is internships and placements were disjoint processes. Yeah, so students did not view internships uh, and placements as connected. They learned from some company and they may do placements some other company. They just went and did internships just because there was a requirement or they were uh, you know asked to do so. And interviews were the main tool for recruitment for companies as well. That was how things were in the past. But what we are seeing more and more in the recent, uh, uh, you know, recent past and going into the future as well is that internships and placements are getting linked. Uh, companies are using internships as a way to identify suitable employees because you have an employee with them for two three months. They work, they closely work with them. They give them projects assignments to do and see how they do it, and so on and so forth. So companies uh, tend to hire their own interns. Okay. Um, um, so they get three, two to three months to judge the students, uh, and after that, uh, so for example, uh, if the student does a May, June, July uh, internship, uh, by we give them a deadline and say by September 12, you let me know if you want to make any offer to your students or not. Yeah. So PPO is called PPO pre-placement offers, and September 12th is, is our deadline to companies to give pre-placement offers. So what happens is if a PPO is offered and the, and the student uh, decides to accept it, he or she may not accept it. That's fine as well. But if he or she decides to accept it, then the person will not be participating in the placement uh, process. We will take them out of the placement process and let other, other students get a chance to uh, get companies. So that's sort of how this PPO's offer works. So this this internships are becoming more and more important because of this as well. Yeah. So because PPO's are important, students understand PPO's. They want to get PPO's from companies. So they work harder and they, they try to show uh, how they can their skills better in their internship uh, opportunity period time period as well. Okay. Uh, sort of a similar thing happens for placements. So I'll quickly go through it. Uh, I know we are supposed to talk for 40 minutes, so I'm ending, reaching the end of that. Um, so, so again, you know, similar uh, place, placement processes happen a little bit later. So, internship process happens first, then our placement process happens later. So registration resume deadlines are a little bit later in August. Uh, the test, uh, the pre-placement tests, etc., happens in mid-September. September, in fact, is it's going to, it's, it's happening or going to happen now, and that will go on until the end of November. And uh, the phase one interviews will happen in the first two weeks of December. So we have some major uh, deadlines, uh, dates in December, about four or five days in which all the interviews will happen. And uh, subsequent to that, just like internships from January to May also, companies may come in at different time, time slots and do interviews with different candidates as well. But a lot of the big chunk of the uh, placement the process happens in the first uh, couple of weeks of December. And you know the uh, we have again rules in place. Any any final year student at ITM Madras is allowed. Sometimes we allow even graduated students to come back uh, and attend interviews as well. This happens on very special cases. We get requests from students who come back and say, "Hey, you know, either I lost a job or a previous company that I uh, did uh, did not honor their uh, offer, etc." This happens uh, in a few cases. In that case, we allow those students also to come back. And sit in a process, and we typically have a one student one offer policy. So once a student obtains an offer, and uh, you know um, he or she is immediately removed from the uh, placement system, so that we can, we can try to maximize the number of students uh, who get placed and get offers as well. And uh, so again, you know, this is all part of the rules and the very complicated rules that are available. Again, you can open our website and see um, uh, as a, as a fair uh, uh, you know new scenario. So we have a, a lot of. Uh, uh, rules and policies in place, and we have had very good uh, placement seasons uh, last few years. You can see some of the numbers, and uh, uh, and the last point is what we're going to talk about next is uh, we not only just place students, but we also place we also help the differently abled students as well. And this is something that we recently did, and uh, we'll talk about that. Yeah, so that's roughly how the internship and placement processes work, and we we focus a lot of attention on it. Uh, faculty like me who spend a considerable amount of time with it, the students spend time uh, spend considerable amount of time. Director asks for uh, updates from us every couple of weeks, uh, sometimes, I'm sorry, every couple of months, sometimes every month as well as to what's happening with internship and placement. So there's a lot of spotlight on this, yeah? And we have a media cell who tries to push, uh, you know, and tell us news about placement, about uh, happening in, in the media as well. And you might have seen a few media articles recently also about this. So there's a lot of spotlight on this internship and placement. That keeps us on our, our toes, this keeps me on my toe, and this keeps the students on their toes as well and make sure that so we have a proper uh, system in place that encourages uh, placements and internships uh, for the students as well. 
This is uh, again, you know, this is, a, this is a placement website just to give you an idea. And all the placement rules and regulations are down here. They circle down here, and you can see it's actually down below. I'm not shown here in the in the screen here, but they're all openly available to, for public to read. Yeah, students can read, companies can read, everybody can read as well. So they're available in a very transparent manner. Okay, so uh, last but not least, uh, the inclusion process. Uh, so I, I talked to you about uh, how the whole placement. Uh, uh, and internship uh, teams work. And this is important because the inclusion would not have happened otherwise, right? Because it's student driven, uh, because the student teams are very strong, they, because it's a very dem democratic process, it's only because of this that the inclusion efforts actually recently uh, uh, came about and it was very successful. Yeah. Without that, it wouldn't have happened very easily. Yeah. That's all I'm trying to say. So, all that, what I've talked about so far is important uh, for inclusion. And for us, inclusion can mean many things. At least in my office, uh, we think of inclusion in many ways, focusing not just on undergraduates, but also on MTechs, MS, and PhD students' placements. Uh, there's always been a spotlight on BTEC so far, but now the spotlight is uh, sort of also happening on different uh, other programs, especially on MS and PhD programs. In fact, recently we had very good success with placing MS students, uh, companies realizing the value of MS students, and we want to start doing that for PhDs as well. Uh, so industries can also see the value of the training that the PhD students get. So not just PhD students means training, you know, teaching career is not as necessary like that. So the focus uh, will be broad based. You know, it's not just on, on one sector of the students, but on uh, all the graduating sectors. And focus is not just on high achievers. So we, uh, somebody who has a very good CGPA, I mean, he or she will automatically get a nice job, right? But how do I get this, uh, you know, so, uh, you know, the average or the low CGPA student, find out what their skill sets are and how to sort of pitch them with companies and who may want to get, uh, you know, benefited from their, uh, from their student as well. So, so that's also another inclusion is what I mean. You know, how do I get the uh, um, uh, so-called low CGPA students uh, to get placed as well? And uh, the other, the third point is also important. The focusing is not just in the high demand areas. You know, high demand areas today are information technology. You have the ZI, ML, data analytics. That's like a craze right now. Uh, so those are all, you know, you can easily place students in those areas or graduating who are coming from those kind of degree programs. But what about core engineering? You know, uh, you know specialized engineering graduates who come in specialized uh, areas. How do we find our companies and ask them, invite them to come here and then uh, get them to interact with the students and then they see value in those students and then place them as well. So that's also important. So in that sense, there's also inclusion in there. And the last but not the least is also the differently able students and ensuring that they get the opportunities that they deserve. So we try to uh, 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 broad, broadly include, uh, look at the idea of inclusion in more than one dimension, uh, as you see here. Okay. And recently you might have seen this in the news. Uh, we have this uh, special placement effort that we did last year. Um, when I say I did, it's we did means it's more of a student team who realized this and said, okay, let's you know see how we can do this. So we, are, we had a special drive where we really helped uh, the, the uh, we, don't, we don't we don't say disabled here. We say differently able students, and uh, uh, you know we had a reasonably good success in placing them with certain companies as well. So so um, uh, this is what actually students uh, define the uh, uh, you know. Uh, um, and and uh, <clears throat> so 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 for example, you know the, the inclusive. Uh, so we'll talk about inclusivity first, from not just from a placement point of view, but how they're included in the in general in the campus itself. So the last point here says, you know, how uh, for example, you know, somebody who uh, cannot see very well or they cannot hear very well, they have different capabilities. For example, so how do you provide audio recordings of lectures? How do you provide notes in Braille? So there are faculty who actually help provide notes in Braille, for example. Yeah. Uh, there, are, there are students who can, they have to come very close to a computer screen to see. They can't sit in, sit in a classroom, they cannot see what this, the faculty is writing on the board, for example. Yeah. Okay, so accessibility to classrooms. Uh, uh, you know, uh, the last one is the placement process. So, my point, the point of the slide here is inclusivity does not mean just placement. They, throughout the process of the institute's various processes in their education, they are felt included. And so, they naturally, you know, they get more, they also get better ready when they come, when it find, comes to the final placement process, per se, as well. Yeah. Okay, so um, um, so so the only the, the only last year actually, to be honest, only the last year there was a special drive for this. We had uh, always had differently able students get placed, but uh, we didn't focus on them. So last year, for uh, I can't remember for what reason, but the student team decided to uh, uh, you know focus on this. Yeah. So so the a target approach was taken uh, to help them get the uh, deserved job opportunities. Yeah. So what the the placement team was uh, uh, very very involved in the student team was very involved in this because you have to find out what the abilities of the students are, places where they are uh, they are you know they are differently abled and uh, and then figure out which uh, which job profiles they can actually suit, then call the companies and then talk to them and say hey you know your job profile this, this student could still be eligible you know although this person is differently abled yeah. So that kind of a very uh, very customized one-on-one -on -one approach was taken 
So this, the placement team took a lot of time to do this, uh, to make this matching uh, on the behalf of the company and then call the company, uh, have interviews with the students uh, in various forms. So there's an audio interview or a video interview and so on and so forth. Okay. And they re and there are a lot of companies that were very for positive, uh, you know, they had a very positive outlook as well. So they responded positively to our outreach and uh, a, a matchmaking was actually made. Okay. And the students were also felt included. So in the sense that, uh, you know, in, in fact, in the future, what we're going to do is for the different able, we're going to have a separate team and they will be differently able to students who will be in the team as well. Okay. In fact, this, this also happened last year also. So this, the differently able student was as part of the placement and internship team. So he or she knew what the difficulties were. So they were able to better uh, explain to our other team members what they should do in terms of making, uh, getting this matchmaking going. Okay, so having the democratic process, having that student involvement, differently able student themselves involved in the process is actually very important as well. So that they will, uh, you know, they will bring in their, uh, you know, their own knowledge about the difficulty, etc., and see how to do it. And through this effort, uh, uh, yeah, we, we couldn't get 100% success, but at least more than 50% of the students were able to procure jobs and start their career. And we are still trying to do that. In fact, we want to uh, formalize the structure better. Uh, this was just happened last year only. So I can't claim too much of experience with this yet, but we're going to use this experience and then sort of enlarge our core team to include those differently able student team as well. And then see if we can actually accelerate the efforts in this direction as well. So that's what I will say about inclusivity here. And finally, we celebrate with the student teams. So at the end of the academic year, whether it's April or May, we uh, you know we call all the student teams, the, the all the heads, the coordinators, the volunteers, etc., and we have a small party-like thing where we call the director. Director also joins us, and we have deans who attend as well. And then we have a, you know uh, uh, it is a general meeting first, and then we have a small dinner, etc., as well that happens as well. Sorry, I didn't have a picture. I was supposed to put a picture here. I couldn't find a picture to put here. So, but it's a big gala event. You know? We have uh, hundreds of volunteers who come. And then we have uh, the faculty uh, advisors like me who come and join this uh, event as well. And we celebrate with the student teams as well. Okay. So with that, I'll summarize quickly. Um, so uh, internship is part of the student's training and that's more and more, uh, uh, it's, it's more and more uh, relevant today than ever before. And it's what is more also relevant is the link between internships and placements. They're now interlinked. Companies are using internships as a, as an, the, inter, the internship is actually the interview process itself. So two months or three months of interviews of the candidates that happens at their, at their own uh, location. And they use the company, they're using that as a way to make placement decisions. Uh, with, uh, this place, pre, uh, these placement decisions, what we call as pre-placement offers, and we encourage the PPOs. And uh, uh, the, the fourth bullet point is very important. At that, like I said, IDM address, we are a strongly student-driven, student-team-driven effort of the internship and placements. And of course, we have our own office staff who uh, support as well, and faculty also who oversee this uh, uh, activity. The rules and policies are clearly stated. They are democratically developed, organically grown from the students themselves. They are made transparent to all the stakeholders, students and recruiters. And inclusivity is very important for us. And we see, we see inclusivity in many uh, uh, directions and viewpoints. And our recent inclusivity placement drive was a very pleasant success. And this was a very intensive one-on-one -on -one matchmaking effort that was done, was carried out. And uh, we were trying to figure out how to formalize it and include it in all our placement processes right now. So with that, I'll stop and I'll be happy to take any questions. Thank you. Thank you, sir, for a very informative lecture on how the internship and placement cell works in your institution, especially for your efforts in placing the differently able students. Thank you. Now we have some time for questions. I would like to request the participants who have joined us with us if you have any questions, kindly raise your hand electronically. In the meantime, we have a couple of questions uh, from viewers from YouTube through YouTube. Uh -huh. uh, is the, whether IIT Chennai offers any internship or data science? Oh, oh, okay. The question is, can students do internships at IIT Madras for data science? I'm assuming it's something like that. Okay, so the see the, the, the office that I'm handling, which is uh, internship and placement, uh, we don't deal with internships for students from outside organizations. It's only for students, our own students to be placed elsewhere. Yeah, For students who want to do internship at our uh, institute, we have two schemes. One is called the summer fellowship scheme, which you can apply online. There's a scholarship, et cetera, involved. Second is you can contact any of the faculty. So uh, there are students, in fact, right now we have, I have a student from a Bangalore you know, private, you know, private college. He just contacted me and I had some work to be done. So we have a formal uh, uh, you know, appointment as a, as a student assistant. And he comes over, he spends three months here and do it. 
So that's also available. So you, the summer fellowship is the formal program to do internship at IIT Madras. And they're, they're informally, you can just contact any faculty because we have research projects, grants going on and we have we need help occasionally. So we just do a quick interview on the, on a Skype or uh, you know or Zoom or whatever it is. And then we get students to come here. But there's a, there's, it's a formal appointment of student assistant for two, three months and they get paid a certain amount as well. That's also possible. So those are two options for doing internship at IIT Madras. Or UGC, uh, many organizations not allowing students to undertake research study. What is UGC's take on it? Another one, during the curriculum design of a subject, the project or internship is not included. What UGC thinks about it? This is a, uh, basically, we would like to say share with the part, uh, participants today that we have been developing uh, guidelines for curriculum and credit framework for undergraduate program. Strong emphasis uh, on uh, internship and research especially for a four-year undergraduate program. So these guidelines will be uh, published very soon. So uh, we can, uh, this will be done very soon. Is there any other questions? One more question, sir. What are the policies for internship program? I think you explained in the beginning. Ah, okay. The, I mean, if you look at the policies in general that come, the questions that come up in uh, you know internships or placement is who who are the students who are actually eligible for internship? You know, can a first year student do come for internship? Office for internship? Can a second year student come? Can they come more than once uh, for internships? Uh, sometimes students will switch degree programs. So they'll go from a bachelor's to a degree, dual degree program. Can they sit for two times for internships? Uh, so these are some of the questions that come up uh, uh, in terms of eligibility. You know, that's, what I, that's a major thing that, is that you see in the, in the policies. Yeah. So who is actually eligible? Because we want to be a fair chance for everybody, right? So if somebody uh, gets a you know, second degree, uh, uh, they switch, switch, shift to a secondary degree and they sit again in all, uh, internships, they'll take up opportunities from other students, for example. Yeah. So these are some of the things that you see in the policies. Uh, that's actually the major thing that is that you see in the policies. Who is actually eligible? Who can actually join the internship program uh, um, and you know and interviews? That's a, that's a major thing that you see in the policies. Yeah. Sir, one more question from Professor uh, Latika Sharma. Please elaborate on summer internship for PG students. Ah, okay. So as I said, the 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 internship. Uh, um, uh, has been largely, uh, if you look at the past, has uh, been focused mainly on BTEC students, right? Now, of course, the dual degree students who do BTEC plus MTEC also, they are, because it's part of the curricular requirement. Whereas if you see MTEC programs, at least at IIT Madras, uh, it's not a curricular requirement. There's no requirement for an MTEC student to take a pass-fail internship program. But more and more companies are also asking for MTEC students to come for internships. And now MTEC students also want to do an internships. So we are allowing that in the sense that in our portal earlier we used to only use choose you can only choose BTEC or dual degree. Now we can choose MTech, you can choose MS, you can use you can choose PhD also, and subject to their departments allowing them, especially if you're an MS scholar for example, you get you're getting a scholarship from the MHRD, right? So you have to get a permission from the from the institute, from the department, from your guide saying that okay I'm going to be away for three months, and I'm I'm getting a paid internship during this period, so I will not take HDRA scholarship, and I'm my my guide is okay with me taking this two to three month break for example, yeah. So we're allowing that and the, and the students are taking that up more and more. So in the last couple of years, if you see, for example, there have been a lot of uh, MTECs. Uh, there's a, a good increase in the MTEC students who are taking up internships. Okay. In fact, students who are you who have just joined the institute because they have immediately joined the internship process, right? So the internship happens, starts happening in August for the next summer. So students who just joined the program will immediately start participating in the internship process. We are, avoid, we are actually increasing that. Um, although it's a little bit of a surprise, you know, somebody who just barely entered into our campus, how can they go for internship interviews is a question that's coming up. But we are permitting that uh, with understanding that the, the, they're actually taking up internship only one year later. And, students, and the companies are also understanding that. They understand that students have not just got any training so far from IIT Madras, but we're enabling that. We're enabling MTECs to take up uh, internship interviews as soon as they enter into the program of study. MS students also who want to take a break uh, and then discuss with their guides, et cetera. They give us a letter saying from the guide and from the department as well, we're enabling that. Now, PG students is something that has not happened that much yet, but uh, we are also looking at that and see how uh, PG students, at least towards the, after they finish their seminar, certain, certain, certain stage of their PhDs can be allowed to take up internships. That's something that's being discussed. And we are also encouraging students to do that. Thank you, sir. Thank you once again on behalf of UGC and all those participants who have joined with us today for this program. Thank you once again.
I also thank uh, Honorable Vice Chancellors and principals, teachers, and students who have joined with us today. Honorable Vice Chairman UGC has also joined with us today. Thank you, sir. And all um, officers from UGC who have joined today. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Sure. Thank you. Thank you for this opportunity. Thank you.